なななななななななななななななAnd I realized I'm not talking to this woman at the post office. I'm talking to a divine spirit that talks through people. It was just, it was her, but it wasn't her. And I think that that's what it's going to be like in the new world. When you have, when you are half flesh, half spirit, spirit will speak through people. And so it gets crazy. <laughs> And it's been crazy. Well, welcome. My name is Mary Moses. I am an oracle. We will be reading for Caitlin here shortly. But in the meantime, I thought it would be really fun to make something natural because I want you guys focused on creating um, natural things for yourself. And I want you to get into um, physical prayers. Everything that you do is a prayer. During the day, you meditate all day long. Through your actions, feeding the birds, watering your plants, cleaning your house, cleanliness is next to godliness, and all of these are your meditative action prayers. At night, you meditate for eight hours a night while you sleep, and if you have collected enough power through your action prayers during the day, you will be aware of the dream world and you will see through the eyes of your double, which is your higher self. So today we're going to make a natural powder. This will take five minutes. Um, and this powder is for your hair and your face. It's high in frequency and it is an antioxidant and it's just something that you should have um, that is, you can use it as a hair colorant, you can use it as a powder, you can use it as a high vibe um, negative ion emitter. So we're going to start with um, a container for the powder and your base is three parts arrowroot powder and arrowroot is a starch flour um, it's gluten-free and it's the finest powder you can get and it does not have talc in it so we're going to do like three parts of that in there Let's see here we go like there like that I, I usually call these universal powders. Um, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take dark chocolate cocoa. The chocolate cocoa has antioxidants and niacin and all kinds of things that really help you um, for anti-aging and for skin issues. Dark cocoa is amazing for acne as well, by the way. Now we're going to take a little cinnamon. And cinnamon smells so good for a powder. Okay, what I also love is vanilla. This is a vanilla powder, Madagascar pure vanilla powder. And vanilla powder has a, like a floral smell. It's really nice and it's beige in color. You can see it going on in there. All right, now you can add cloves. Clove is a natural antibiotic um, in the sense that it will get rid of bugs on your skin if you have little parasites. Um, it, it's an anti-parasitic. So a little clove powder. And then I'm going to put a little bit of Himalayan sea salt to raise the vibes. Now, if you want to go and do something crazy, you can add activated salt that you activate in a musical box. Because things are activated through sound and light. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to shake it up. I always put a pretty crystal inside, um, maybe a couple of crystals. And the crystals serve to raise the frequency, but it also serves to help mix everything up. So we're going to put a little top on there, and we're going to shake it. Now, when I make my blueberry thyme powders, I actually add an essential oil to the powder. But because this has cinnamon and vanilla, it is actually going to smell really good. You can put it in your hair, on your face, in your on your feet, um, on animals, anywhere. So we're going to shake it. Shake it. 
Shake it round in circles. Shake it up and down. All right. I'm going to open it up. Oops. And this is a universal powder. Look at the color of it. I'll put it under the light so you can see. It's beige. It's like a beige makeup. Okay? And it smells like cinnamon vanilla cookies. Okay? And it's all natural. Um, you can get organic um, arrowroot powder, flour, but um, let me put a little bit on my hand for you to see here. I'm just leaving a little bit there. You can barely tell the difference between my hand and the powder. You can put this in your hair. You can put it on your face. You can use it as makeup, powder, um, or anything. Um, and there's no essential oil, but it just has herbs. So arrowroot powder, dark cocoa powder, anti-aging, antioxidants, niacin, helps with skin issues, eczema, acne, cinnamon, I don't add very much of this. This is really just for color and smell. Um, but it, although it is good for you, but it's too grainy. So you're not going to want to put too much of that. You're not going to want to put too much um, Himalayan sea salt because it's too grainy. So you're just going to do a couple of pinches because it has negative ions and it adds over 84 minerals to your skin and hair. And then the, the vanilla powder is a very fine vanilla powder from Madagascar. And then if you want to do a clove powder for parasites, you can add the clove powder. What this is going to do is it's going to be a healing powder for your face and skin. That is a makeup if you want to. Um, but it's also for, great for coloring your hair. If you have dark hair and you want to color your hair naturally without using stuff, use dark chocolate in there. And you'll, you'll make this beautiful powder. Uh, go outside find a pretty little flower, put it in there, and put your top on it like this. And you have your beautiful powder that you made with your pretty little powder puff. All right, high vibe, all natural, good for humans, good for animals, and something that um, will add um, a little bit of pride that you know how to make something so amazing, something that you cannot buy at a store anywhere. If you missed any portion of this video about how to make your own makeup powder, hair colorant powder, it's also a dry shampoo. Um, it will help your hair not to look so greasy and it is universal. It's for all skin colors because it has a dark little hue to it. So it's not going to make your skin look white. All right. So anyway, yeah, you can uh, follow me on Mary Moses Art. And we, before we go live to do readings, we, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make lots of stuff so that you can self-sustain and you can um, not be dependent on the world. All right. So let's move forward. Now we're going to connect with the energy of Caitlin today. Caitlin is having her reading on, oh my goodness, what is her purpose? does she have a twin flame where like what I when I think of Caitlin I see you on a Ferris wheel going round and round and round and you're like hello anybody hear me I'm going up I'm going down I'm going up and it's really fun but uh I'm ready to get off and I'm ready to start for, to see where I'm going and what what where this is going instead of going around in circles so spirit brought you three cards today tenderness and look at the picture risk. Sometimes if you want things to happen and you hear a voice telling you to get off the Ferris wheel, you might want to risk and go ahead and jump off. I'll be right there with you holding your hand. And when you jump off, you're going to want to set boundaries. Not everyone should know how you feel or think. All right. Keep those there. So you are Bunny Hope. Bunny hops. <laughs> You're bunny hops. I love your name. You're so cute. So I hope you enjoyed the powder making, Caitlin, because um, it's, it's good to know how to make stuff that isn't harmful to um, ourselves or others. Um, 
And we're going to learn to make all kinds of things together. So stay tuned for how to make edible lotions and all kinds of things so that we can um, make our prayer that we are ready to be independent and and use resources that are natural for ourselves and our families. Okay, so let us move forward. Let's get our little Mushi. Mushi is the anointer. We'll um, take the energy of rose essential oil and we're going to anoint your piece just for magic. And then we're gonna do a short meditation between you and me where you have to be a child, like we're on a playground. And every time I think of you, Caitlin, you're spinning like this. You are spinning round and round and round on a swing on the Ferris wheel everywhere on the ground. So we are anointing your piece. Why? Because it's fun. Mushi's going to give you a kiss. Mwah. Okay. Caitlin, you are... Oh, let's see. There's lotus flowers all around you, but they're pink. They're not yet white. So you're in your pink phase. Um, oh, you have such great energy. So anyway, you, you dance so much and spend so much. I can't catch up with you in my mind. So I'm like, hey, Caitlin, um, stop for just one second. I want to show you something. And you're like, what? I'm like, something amazing. You're like, what? come over here. Don't spin over there. Come over here. So then you stop spinning. You come over to me and I show you a cliff. And I say, Caitlin, you don't have to spin around and around on the ground. Um, we can fly. And you're like, uh, uh, and I'm like, yeah, if, if you believe we can fly over this Canyon and feel that wind blowing on our face together and the smell of beautiful lily flowers everywhere in the air. And we're so happy to be free. And so you're not sure. So what I want you to do is just go ahead and just do it. So you hold my hand and we jump and we go down and then back up and down and back up and then we fly straight and we're flying through the canyon toward the ocean and the more you are that you have faith that you can fly the happier and lighter you feel and you start giggling and you're very happy okay that's you now we're ready to go forward you're a butterfly If I hear a song, there may be one verse or one word for you, not the entire song. I followed the Moskva and down to Duncan Park. I'm listening to the wind of change. Southern summer night. Soldiers passing by, they're blowing in the wind of change. Now, I am going to take my time on, th on this and really look at where you are and what's going on.
Um, okay. I do see you. There is a cloaked being behind you. We will look at that. Um, you're sitting with two other females around a table, looking at cards or doing something. You're seated in front of somebody and you're holding their hand. And so you are in front of them and you're holding their hands. And if you touch them, you can feel things. Th that aren't you. See, the matrix wants us to do matrix things. Spirit wants you to do spirit things. And you remind me of somebody who, when they touch them, they can talk to the dead. You can talk to the dead. Maybe you don't know you can do that. Maybe you've never tried. But all these people seated around a table, there's a man there. There's a female here. There's an old lady here. She's wearing a cloak. It's like a seance or something and, and everyone's seated around a table and the old woman's holding an orb, like a crystal ball looking up and this table is here and they want to talk to the dead. And uh, Anubis is there. It's the god of the dead, of the underworld. So, uh, okay, let's think about that for a moment. Let me turn my light down a little bit. It's too bright for me. Maybe about there. There we go. There's this old woman, like a grandmother um, or a great grandmother. She is a seer and you have some kind of gift like that because this older woman here, um, is putting her eye on your third eye. Like, like you are being taught, uh, to be spiritual. and to have a spiritual gift that will help to awaken all of humanity, including yourself. But there's a little bit of something about your Taurus field, which is the apple. And, and you're in a mirror phase. You don't quite know who you are.
And there's mudras, hand mudras, where one finger is down, the other one is up, and you're holding your hand like this. This is a mudra, um, and it is something you may end up getting into, and you're holding a crystal ball or something in your lap. Not really sure what this is yet. And you have a, a glass slipper. You have a, a foot that is divine. So you're, you are being divinely led through your path. Um, why you're holding a coffee cup of some sort with the smoke coming up out of it. Having something to do with maybe apothecary or some kind of smoke or aromatherapy. You have a stag. And this is... Um, spirit that things happen for you like lightning uh, like a lightning strike and um, this is your spirit currently your spirit guide is a stag and but you also have other energies so there are worlds being hatched out like an egg and they're just opening up there's um, see you're holding this orb and why there's this older man also he has um a crown a tic-tac-toe symbol some strange symbol here oh that's the crucible okay and uh goes down like this that and um You have four parts to yourself, and um, they're a little out of balance. We're going to talk about that. You cannot hear your double self or your higher self if you do not go into the balance of this, this four flame. There's a child in a doorway. There's a fish. This is the age of, a, of Pisces. There's a little child in a doorway. A little girl. Strange that one of your feet is white, the other one is not. Um, this means that you are half flesh, half spirit, and you must see yourself as such. You must. You must see that you are more than what you are. You must have faith in your abilities. You need to know that you and and your spirit guides um are wanting you to know that your brain works like the golden compass. You have a compass here. And um, there's an anointing bottle of some sort here with a picture of Christ coming out of the bottle. And a peacock or some bird in the bottle you have the number 111 a lot you have the tic-tac-toe a lot this is twin flame there there does seem to be a twin flame for you and um it will be, he will, or she, I don't know, will be a mirror of you. But you need to balance some things, and there's some things that are going on in your life um, before that will occur. Um, let me see here. What 
I would like to do is ask spirit a little bit more about You might meet him at a coffee shop. <laughs> There's a cup of coffee. <sighs> but yes, a twin flame is in your um in your midst and and you um have abilities you probably haven't tapped into yet you haven't eaten the apple your taurus field um um you also have a cat a cat a female that's a, a lioness and she um she has a scroll that hasn't opened yet and um it has a symbol of the american space force um, this symbol is connected to the Galactic Federation. It's connected to ancient, uh, alien symbols. It's a graduation, um, to be invited into becoming a master. Um, so that's also the symbol of the Lima and the American Space Force. So I will look into that. I don't really, I'm not quite sure about that yet. Um, but you, uh, You know, that older woman is here twice, by the way. And there's this number 13 that's strange, like in Norse mythology, the way it's spelled like this, 13. And then you have the number 13 on you, but it's spelled like this, but not like that. And then you have this um, fee seminal, uh, symbol, like that, and then an owl. When I see long hair, this means that you have power in your hair. Don't dye your hair. Take really good care of your hair, please. Your antenna to hear the voice of God comes from your hair. Now, there's a lion down here. I believe that it's a possibility that the twin flame that you do end up meeting is going to enhance your psychic uh, abilities. It's almost as if um, you can connect with the dead, like Teresa Caputo, like Long Island Medium, which I'm going to go see in April, by the way. Um, but you have to touch them, it looks like. I don't know. So, let's see here. It's 
Spirit says it'll be like Shrek and Fiona. The letter F, Farquad. Fiona. For some reason, it's going to be like that. He's going to rescue you somehow. So he'll be your Shrek. And you'll be Fiona. And... There's something about some kind of money here. Strange kind of money. Strange money. This is a fish going up and a fish going down. And the fish going down is crashing into the fish going up. This is your Taurus field, the, torna the, the apple. Things will happen like a thief in the night. The, the white stag. You're not alone. You have an older man and an older woman helping you achieve a balance between your heart, your spirit, and your mind to understand how to work your brain and how to work your spirit at like a golden compass. So the 1111 is your twin flame. And if you look at 1111 here, and you had another one. Where was the second one? Anyway, twin flame here. There may be a clock that says your twin flame is not going to quite come until something like that. So let's go ahead and talk about these symbols here. Um, we're going to look into alchemical symbology. Right now, you are, your, your soul is growing along with the rest of us. So we have doubled, been born again. We've gone through a tripling, and now I'm seeing many of us are going through a quadrupling. This means that we are going home. This means that our, we are going to have all knowledge. And this knowledge is going to help us do great and mighty things, spiritually speaking, right? So the peacock in the vase is a time of your life when you are melting all of the ideas of who you think you are in with your religions and with your perceptions and ideals and philosophies and melting it into the color white, cleaning up all that is false. That's the crucible. Oh, there's the other one. 1111 in the crucible. The crucible is your, you are going through burning away all that is false. So only the voice of God can speak through you. But here's the thing. Those of us who have a certain thing like mojo, you can call it like mojo, is because of this uh, grandmother, or this older woman that's connected to you, um, had a gift and that gift was passed down to you. And that is the ability to talk to the dead. Now, here's the weird thing. If you've ever listened to Teresa Caputo talk about her life, she heard voices. She felt things that were not her own feelings. She became passionately angry, passionately happy when she would get around people. She didn't know that she was a, a, a medium. She didn't know that it was dead people trying to talk to her. She thought it was herself. And so many people who have these gifts often adopt the energy of the unseen world and we end up very depressed and very sad and very downtrodden because we don't know that those aren't our feelings. We are literally hearing and seeing the voice of the dead or the voices of people around us. I'm looking for the, the, the peacock. So the peacock in the vase 
is kind of like that. Let's see here. I think it's back here. Am I missing it? There's the holy dove in the vase, not the peacock. There it is. So the peacock, um, it has many colors and the swan is white. When the peacock gives up its tail colors, everything turns white in the blink of an eye. Okay, so here you have the peacock that turns white in the blink of an eye. The stag with its antlers that looks like lightning. The Christ coming out of the bottle. So this purification process happens like the blink of an eye, or as Jesus put it, like a thief in the night, right? So your awakening will hatch like an egg and suddenly your little baby chick known as the voice of God will go cheep cheep and you'll hear God. You're like, what? And you'll hear the dead and you're like, what? And you'll be able to use this gift to help people connect to their loved ones or whatever. So this will happen like a bleep, blink of an eye and, and then there is the reddening stage. And after that stage is called the reddening stage and the reddening stage is the red apple. So you are currently in the crucible. You have not met your twin flame. You are learning to balance um, very many pieces to yourself, including not knowing who you are. All the colors of your peacock need to bleed into one. This is the purification of turning into the white wizard, the white peacock, the white rabbit, the white stag, the white elephants, and the white holy dove. Christ says, like a thief in the night, Christ consciousness will come. And so here is your stag coming to you, turning you white. So here you are, you are white. The table is white. The orbs are white. Everything is white. And then suddenly your foot is white. And this white foot, and you have a white hand. And this hand is a mudra that makes the letter G. This is sacred geometry. And letting go of things. Letting go of emotions, beliefs, many things. So you're going to... You, there's some things that you need to let go. A contract of sorts. Maybe a promise you made. And the two fish reflects the age of Pisces we've left. We've entered the age of Aquarius. But you're holding the cup and the cup is full. It needs to be poured out for the age of Aquarius. And, but it is also a symbol of meeting somebody possibly in a coffee shop, tea shop, something like that, a twin flame, a mirror of you really, male or female, I don't know, but whatever your preference. Um, so you're going through the wisdom owl um, in order to understand how to be a master. And the number 13 is the master. So let me get my notebook so I can explain a little bit more for you how to um, balance these four parts to yourself. One, two, three, four. This is the most important one that needs the most work. This one is low self-worth. This one is self-importance. This one is seeking. And this one is connecting. Um, nothing in any of these is wrong at all. It's just about balance. So let's talk about balance. Hold on. Yeah, I need to get up and get, get my notebook. So notice that you're facing west. You are looking west. Anytime you see an animal or a human or anything facing west, this reflects that you are starting to see God's reflection in your own face. If you were facing east, this means could possibly mean, not always, that you um, do not see God. This is why you're holding the mirror. I have a difficult time explaining this because if you're not religious or, or you are, it sounds, it sounds weird. 
We are born just flesh. We don't understand the voice of spirit. We don't understand the manifestation or the crystallization of spirit inside the flesh. We don't understand that as an embryo, we grew inside the womb of our mother. And when we were born, it caused major trauma to be separated from her. We don't understand that the embryo doesn't stop multiplying after you're born. When we are at a certain age, we become more than flesh. We actually, like an embryo, double in the invisible unseen world. And this doubling is called born again in Christian concept. But in alchemical concept, it is called twice born. Shamans call it your double self. You in the flesh have a physical appearance, but you have an invisible double self. And this double self will do things for you. And if you seek first the kingdom of God and things of, that are of life energy, your double self will help you find your twin flame, help you become an oracle, somebody who can talk to the dead, help you become a master, and help you see God in the mirror. You can't do it alone. You cannot do it alone. Your double needs, needs to do this for you. Your double is connected to the Holy Spirit and God. It is immortal and eternal. When your energy and the energy of your double are in equal frequency and balance, you will have a lot of power and do many great things. The deception of this world is to distract you and make you think that you have no power and make you not believe in magic or oracles. The oracle was written in the Bible 23 times. And this oracle energy is the voice of God. Now, when we've been born again, it creates a boat. This boat looks like a very important shape. It's the most important shape you'll ever learn about, known as the vesica piscis. It is the eye of the needle that Jesus talked about. But it is also a reflection of the baptism of water and the baptism of fire, which are energies that we go through to painfully grow out of childhood spiritually and into our power, balanced and directed by God. So the baptism of water is surrendering and letting go. And the baptism of fire is actually um, burning away all that is false and burning away the false face and the false self and really coming into equal balance with flesh and spirit. So it is the boat and it is the Holy Grail. So if you are in the boat, you can only go in the boat two by two. You have to be born again. Now, once you're in the boat, you triple. Your spirit will triple through knowledge, through action, like changing your diet, changing who you are around, changing everything. If you hear the voice of God, God may ask you to clean. Cleanliness is next to godliness. God may ask you to stay away from certain people or to listen to frequency or to meditate or to get into martial arts or to, or to do yoga or to get into crystals or to sun gaze. And if you obey, then yes, you will triple, which you seem to have already done. And this creates the holy dove that gets set free from the boat. There's the boat. There's the holy dove. Once the Holy Dove is set free, then your next stage of growing your soul is not tripling, but quadrupling. And this is where you're having an imbalance. Quadrupling your soul creates the olive branch. And the olive branch is like the cross. And the olive branch is is a promise that we're about to become pretty powerful and we're going to wake up. But if the threefold flame, which is this, is out of balance, or if this is out of balance, you will not 
be able to have power. So let's talk about balancing this. First thing you need to know is you need to become Fiona. (laughs) Believe in magic. Um, Know that your Shrek will come and rescue you from a tower. When you see yourself in the mirror, if you see pain, suffering, trauma, um, bitterness, worry, anything, you're not seeing the face of God and you don't know who you are. Um, This part of you is gaining wisdom. This is you reading and learning through wisdom and knowledge how to turn your peacock and the glass vial into Christ consciousness to be as powerful as Christ. Jesus said, if you believe me, you can be as powerful as me and more. Now, that they are seated around a table is a concept from these books up here called Dr. John D. Dr. John D. um, is a table that unlocks things in your brain. It's called the voice of the angels. And they are magical squares. If you get into magical squares and the language and the voice of the angels, you may unlock many things within you. But you're holding hands with them like feeling their energy, right? Um, And you're doing something with your hand here as well with that apple. And these contracts. So it looks like you're, you're, you're a key and a key is somebody who unlocks things for people and hmm. your Taurus field looks like an apple. When our Taurus field is entangled into the World Wide Web. So you have one foot in the World Wide Web. The other foot in spirit. So, you know, the flesh has to live in this world. Spirit doesn't. Um, I believe that you have a little bit of your energy entangled in other people's energy. And we talk about this a lot, and that is recapitulation. Some kind of contract that you signed in your heart here is keeping one foot in the World Wide Web and not in alignment with spirit here. And it's the age of Pisces, the tale of Pisces, pushing on your Taurus field, which is your apple. Um, This person should be up here. It should be all equal and equal alignment, like the four people around the table. It should be all four. And the four is the fourth heart chakra, and you have a cup of coffee by the fourth heart chakra here. Or a cup of tea, whatever that is. If you've watched me go live before, you know that your luminous light body, which is your double, your double self, is a net. It's a luminous net. Your ethereal net is the luminosity that surrounds the physical body. This web of energy can get torn to shreds during daily living. Huge portions of it become lost or entwined in other people's bands of energy. If you're not careful, you can lose energy and vital force. How do we get our energy entangled into someone else's energy? Thought. Your mind works through the golden compass. Your golden compass is if you... Um, send your double that can manifest as an animal um, to the swamp of sadness, um, you will see and feel great despair and great depression. But if you seek first the kingdom of God, you will feed your spirit and your spirit will become stronger and stronger and so will you. So hunting for personal power and recapitulation is absolutely mandatory. There's some contract that you signed at a very as a very young person that needs to be cut out. It looks like there's a teacher 
and there's children and there's something that you need to go back into your childhood and there's people being baptized in water here. Um, it looks like a preacher baptizing children. That is what it looks like. So there's this older woman here. Like here. And then there's this man. And he's pushing on the head of people going um, underwater. And this is water. I don't know what that means. Anyway. Um, what does your double do for you? What can your double do? Anything you want it to do. It can jump over trees, fly through the air, become large or small, take the shape of an animal. It can become aware of other people's thoughts or become a thought and hurl itself in an instant over vast distances. It can even act like the self. When you learn to use your double, there's nothing that you can't do. Your double is quite powerful. It's, it's immortal and it is connected to God. And so um, know that about yourself. And let go of something and become in alignment with your double. Your double will help you find your true love. Your double will help you talk to the dead and become an, a, like an oracle or a psychic or something. Things happen like a thief in the night. And your, your um, peacock is about an instant transformation. Trust that things will happen overnight. You are being taught by two spirit guides to become a master, not only a master like of wisdom through knowledge, but through timeline shifting, shifting from one world to the other or one reality to the other. Now, this tic-tac-toe symbol should be closer together. Like, it should look like that, but it's not. So this means... It's going to be a little while. I don't know how long before you will find your true love. I will ask when you will find your true love. A date, maybe. Some date that would... And then, yeah, so it says lightning. Things will happen like lightning. Um, I see the number 10. Maybe around October, October 11th. I don't know. It says 10, 11. There's a fox down here. This is something that happens in your DNA. There's an energy locked in like a prison under your chair. There's some sort of strange writing. It 
it's a curse. Um, for you to be seated in a chair is a time of, of judgment. And um, it's a time that isn't what you think judgment is. It's basically... Um, Uh, it says something right here. Chat. Chat room. I don't know what that means. Um, a judgment is assessing whether you hear God or not. And giving you the ability to have responsibility to do great things or not. It's not a bad thing. There's no real judgment. We often judge ourselves, but there's something about whether you have opened yourself like a box or not. And you have because you are, you have four parts to yourself. One, two, three, four. Oh, there's another one. Okay, so it gets closer together. And then finally here. So one, two, three take a picture of this and um let's think about it for a minute let's have a chat there's a house here there's um like an angel a motherly angel with a little lamb I, I really like her. She's She has a beautiful face. She's an angel. And something about don't worry, everything is is um working for you. Was the contract from being baptized? I don't know. It, uh, it, um, Look, I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ in a spring by my best friend, right? And my life did change after that because it was just meant to be, right? Um, but I was baptized before that in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit in a Baptist church. And I didn't do anything because who, the father of what? Son of what? Right? It, it wasn't. And then there's a reptilian down here. So something happened where we signed a contract with a reptilian. And many of us were touched by these reptilian men who, who, were, uh, who were part of these church organizations that weren't following um, the Holy Spirit. They were different. Um, but anyway, yeah, there's a contract here and there's people being baptized and I, I don't really know i mean because my opinion is baptism is simply a, a wanting to hear the voice of spirit and become half flesh half spirit step into the energy of god and christ consciousness and change your life through thought action and all that i don't see it as a contract but that is what we're seeing here I think that the idea of religion is there's something false about it because um, worshiping outside of ourselves is not what Jesus taught. Jesus said, um, the kingdom of heaven is within you and you can be as powerful as him and more. You can move mountains. There's something about the frequency of the sun also being presented to you. This is the um, infrared energy of the sun. Things that are going to occur quickly for you and for everyone collectively. There's going to be a shift like a thief in the night.
Um, right now I'm only taking $30 readings because the other readings that I did is taking up too much of my time. I don't have time to do anything. Um, so, and there is a wait time, by the way, like, um, almost two weeks wait time. Well, there's, there is something that says that you should be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, if you've watched my readings, you know that it looks as if the entire age of Pisces is the body of Christ. Jesus Christ has had many different names. Mithra is one of them. And the letter J wasn't even in Jesus' time, so I don't know where they find this letter J for Jesus. It may be more like Yeshua, but because um, it would have been the letter Y. But uh, but then again, we went through a polar shift, and Jesus Christ does have eleven letters in it. Maybe it was meant to be to change to Jesus Christ for our time, and maybe the Mithra was meant to be for another time. But in our age and day and age, for some reason, it is the name Jesus Christ which comes to the number 11. So I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ in the springs because of the Bible saying, um, living waters will flow from your heart. And it wasn't my decision to be baptized. It just happened where um, my best friend, you know, she's pretty religious. And she's like, Aunt Mary, I just really think you should be baptized. And I was like, I was already baptized in a Baptist church by some creepy dude. You know, and um, she was like, no, you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And I was like, what's the difference? And she was like, well, it says you should be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So I did. And, um, and then my life was really hard because I think it, it puts you, it shoves you into an, an awakening. And the awakening isn't always fun. And so... Um, I didn't think it was a good thing at first, but then later on, she said, she said to me, don't be surprised if you will step into a power. And I was like, like what? Walking on water? Like what? And then I ended up, I'd already been doing this before I was baptized, but I, I didn't do it in a way that was beneficial for me or for others until I got on TikTok, and um, and then now here we are. But anyway, I, I to tell you the truth, I don't know. I don't really like religion. I don't believe religion is healthy. I think worshiping outside of yourself in a box is a some people who follow Paul. Paul never met Jesus. Paul built all these churches to worship outside of ourselves, and Jesus never wanted us to worship him. Not ever. He said, do not worship me. He said, follow me. And so becoming as powerful as Christ is what he wants. He said, if you believe me, you will be as powerful as me and more. And so I don't like religion. I do not like this. Um, these organizations that are mostly male dominated, I, I could just puke to even think of it. I can't stand it. My grandfather was a preacher. My stepdad was a preacher. And I'm sorry, they weren't nice, good people. But I, I went through an awakening, and here we are. Yeah. Let me see what Caitlin is saying. Hold on.
Um, see, this, this is you. This is the back of your head. This is a twin flame. This is you guys touching hands with the 1111 twin. The man or the energy of the cloaked being I'm waiting for spirit to, to tell me what, what it means. My initial reaction was people who die that was part of your soul family can manifest as a twin flame in your life. But also because you're touching hands as if you are connecting to their energy you guys together seem to be able to talk to the dead. The cloaked be being is a representation of an ability to talk to the dead. You both of you have, have you, now your head, this is the back of your head. This is the other person. You're touching hands. And because you guys are touching like a twin flame, you're able to talk to the dead. The dead connects to your mind. It's a communication to you. Um, if you have not met your twin on the spirit realm to see if they are who they are meant to be, then um, don't do, don't connect with people ignorantly now. Um, if you feel they are in divine timing and you've had a lot of synchronicities, look for the signs and the witnesses. Why it says chat, I don't know if you go into chat rooms, but there's something about. Um, The word chat. I just wonder if someone who is passed away also will bring you your twin flame because I see a hand on that cloaked being pushing two people together. A beacon a beacon um, what is a beacon I will look and see I mean this is a beacon right here that's that glass bottle is called a beacon I do not believe it's a curse though, Caitlin. That that cloaked being is not a curse. First of all, nothing can be against you. You've you've been twice born. Spirit is greater than you than you are in the flesh. Nothing can curse you now. The only person that can curse you is yourself now. No one outside of you can hurt you. Not a chance. But what we talked about is um, 
balancing yourself. Your holy temple needs to have life, energy, food, and water. Your mind should be focused on the kingdom of heaven, sacred geometry, numerology. Learn. Learn how to feed your spirit. Sun gaze. Get into martial arts, yoga, nature. Feed your spirit life energy. Cleanliness is next to godliness. There's imbalance in the four. And all four of these pieces, which is 11, 11 equals four, need to, needs to come into balance. Because of some kind of contract. Um, I'll answer you in a minute. I'm just trying to talk to Caitlin about what she's seeing. Yeah, let me ask a little bit more about the contract. don't want to say um, because it sounds not real. I did a reading for someone who couldn't remember their childhood. And when I looked at their childhood, there was a piece of pizza and some energies that sacrificed uh, the little girl. Um, and some reptilian manipulation as a child that you don't remember. Memory reptilian. Children being forced of some sort. What I've seen many times in my readings is that there are things that happen outside of time. If, if you want a, a good reference for, for this, you would watch Witness of Another World. And it's on Netflix. This is a story of a child who was taken aboard a spaceship. And he was shown a hologram of, of himself. And his Something happened to him where his consciousness was put into a parallel reality where things were the same, but they were a little different. And it happened outside of time. And not everyone remembers that, though. Being taken aboard a spaceship as a child and manipulated. And so 
this disturbed this man so much that he's a recluse and he cries and he doesn't like it because it was something that just was just and so that all the people who knew that this happened to him said look these reptilians these things they do things outside of our knowledge and so something happened to you as a child that keeps you from seeing God within you, gives you a sense of something inside of you that kind of messes up your Taurus field, keeps you a little down low here compared to your other parts. And it's about this reptilian. And there's, there's a woman and a man and two children being pushed into something with this reptilian. Um, when you, do, when you recapitulate, if you've read this book, it kind of makes me feel really sick to my stomach to think about it and talk about it because these reptilians have the ability to, to, um, do bad things to children through people. And um, this is why recapitulation is so, so important. Because if you go back to your childhood and say to your double, go back to a place that I don't remember. Maybe get into hypnotherapy. I don't know. And breathe back the power that was given away and repair some kind of contract that was made, some kind of something that keeps you from repairing your Taurus field completely so that all three parts of yourself are in alignment. Reptilian deception it comes in the form of frequency. And to be honest, I don't know how it works. I just know that there is some thing about erasing our memory of something that happened where we don't remember, which, thank God, I don't want to remember. I don't want you to remember. I think the key or the goal is to take this information and continue doing breathing exercises, strengthening your Taurus field, and really letting go of the age of Pisces. Because here you are as a child being pushed underwater and then bada, being bada boom, you're over here in another doorway. And then here's the galactic space force and memories are locked up in a prison, a past forgotten, something forgotten, something not remembered and it doesn't matter if we were tied up taken away held for ransom or whatever we're alive now but something is um holding you down a little bit one part of yourself witness of Another world, Netflix, story, child, spaceship, consciousness moved outside of time. Yes. I think it may have happened to me as well. And that, that trauma... Um, stagnates or petrifies us, keeps us petrified. And this petrification is like the tin man that couldn't move. And if you're so petrified that you can't move, um, you need the anointing oil. And this looks like that bottle right there is like the anointing oil. It's a, it's a, it's a beacon.
Yes, baptism is a contract. Yeah, even if this isn't your reading, you're probably here to, to understand this message. There's more here going on than meets the eye. Um, I'll ask, let me ask, Let's ask, this isn't, I'm not gonna um, put this in your video, but let's just ask, did you die when you were little and your consciousness was bounced to a parallel reality and there's something that you've forgotten and this forgetting, did it, um, so, so this Christ energy does want to talk to you. And um, like wants us to understand something. So it looks like that letter F, Fiona, again. Don't know what that means. Okay, the question is, did you die? Um, hmm.
something happened and you were born again through the Christ consciousness, through this baptism. But something happened. I don't see that you died. I just see major reptilian influence, so much so that you were asleep. You weren't aware. Something happened. And and here you're being baptized through this Christ consciousness, a new self. What does it mean to be born again? Does it mean you really literally die of who you were? Um, so here is a baptism by a reptilian and it's a hat man and it's like the CIA. They are hat people. They have long black robes and they're, they're in the water. And, um, that, that is, and then here is a part of you here. Like your consciousness. You know, when the Wicked Witch of the West wanted Dorothy's shoes, there are negative energies that wants your, your brain. And uh, something happened. So Christ is a portal. We come from the world of the dead, the reptilians, and we begin to learn through the body of Christ. And then when we are baptized, we get past the reptilian and we emerge into safety where before we were stuck in their energy and we couldn't do anything. I don't see that you died. I see that you were, see there's this Cheshire cat from, from Alice in Wonderland smiling like this, right? It's a, a, the Cheshire cat. And the Cheshire cat says, oh, you don't know who you are, Alice. You don't remember who you are. When we are under mind control, we don't remember who we are. We don't know anything. And so we have to go through the body of Christ, which is a portal. And the baptism serves as a portal because water, especially spring water, is a portal. Now, like you were here and then here's this. And they want your energy and your consciousness. And uh, we had to move through the age of Pisces, which is the body of Christ, and to go through the baptism. Now, your hands are here under water. And like this. And you're holding something in your hand. Underwater. And so this entire thing is like a baptismal pool. And uh, and then there's this stork. carrying this little baby in a little sack. And somebody with a sun on their head. You've been born again. Meaning that you aren't under reptilian control anymore. There's something about your peace that there's something. Um, it's a reptilian holding a staff that is the number seven, like this. 
and why why are they touching this what is this show me what that is i see a little girl with wings caught in a net children caught in a net being saved being saved through the energy of Christ, which the entire age of Pisces is the energy of Christ. And this is a net. It's an ethereal net. It goes like this. And there are little children, thousands, thousands and thousands of energies going up into the net. Uh, through Christ consciousness. But the reptilians want to keep us down here. They want to use our energy and our mind. I think the baptism was good. Unless you're baptized by a reptilian, of course. I don't... And then here, you know, you being twice born. Oh, but then you have this token... And it goes like a tube down the letter F back to the reptilian. There's something that you are that that is keeping your energy and your power connected to this lower realm, even though you've been t twice born, which is the contract. So. Okay, I'm going to tell you what I think it is. You should be aware that you have been saved from uh, reptilian mind control and be very thankful to the Galactic Federation, the Lion, and those that are in charge of your Taurus field, your consciousness, and who you are so that you can see God and be thankful for God. Because I, I think that the baptism was a good thing but I, I think you need to see it as a rescue because um, here you are going underwater, but you were under the control of the reptiles. And then bada bing, bada boom, you go from here to another portal, which is a parallel life. So you were under some sort of strange control and I think this is about just being aware of how close God is to you, how closely God works with you, how you are helped, how you could have fallen into the mouths and become part of something awful, but you were saved. And and don't don't push that away, don't minimize it, that it was important. And it gave you half flesh, half spirit with the shoes here. Which is ultimately going to take you on a path to becoming quite powerful. It, it, well, for me, I'm, I'm shocked about this one because usually if I see a contract where it's a baptism and it's connected to a reptilian, my assumption is that this baptism was not a good thing. On the contrary, the Christ energy showed up and said, no, you were actually saved from reptilian mind control. And... Don't dismiss how important that is and do not think that you the power that you will step into is because of um, flesh. It's because you've been twice born like a stork and spirit working through you is what makes you powerful and it was God who saved you from uh, unhappy demise here. 
And I think just acknowledging that God loves you very much and has been watching over you is part of your Taurus field somehow not understanding that the age of Pisces was the body of Christ. That you had to move out of a reptilian into the body of Christ, into who you are now. But I don't think that religion is... I think religion has become quite corrupt in many cases, but I'm seeing a lot of my readings talk about baptisms and anointings and cleaning off the reptilian energy out of our ethereal net is becoming really important for some reason. I don't know if you've ever thought about getting into apothecary either, but I'm that smoke from that coffee is going up your nose and it's almost like ayahuasca mushroom tea that somehow you're able to see things. Yeah, religion is the connection to the reptiles. I believe so. I mean, think about it. I think it's been corrupt. I mean, Christ said, um, don't call anyone father, and everybody calls the priest father. I don't know. <laughs> All I know is I feel like there's a divine mother, a divine Holy Spirit that does lead us and does uh, take us and turn us into a powerful, a more aware beings, more connected all of that, but um, I see much fault, much, much, much fault in religion. And believe me, I, I was raised up on Bible campuses and I've been friends with lots of religious people and it's surprising how, how many religious people do not hear the voice of your double self and do not step into power and... Um, yeah, I don't like religion either. My daughter follows Norse mythology. My husband is a, reads the book of Enoch, the book of Thomas, really gets into the Testament of Solomon, really just is a truth seeker. Um, for me, I just take everything and I just want to know the truth. And I don't want to be a liar and I don't want to be like a preacher and I don't want to be... Um, polarized by anything. I want the truth and I want to share the truth and I don't want to be wrong because I'm tired of hearing false news. Mm hmm Yeah. I think it is smart to observe religion. I have Bible study with my best friend's mother. And I, I love many of the teachings of the Bible. I mostly like the teachings of Christ, but Christ is also questionable. I was told that Christ is the entire age of Pisces. He says, turn over a stone and there I am also. And it's the crystallization of spirit within the flesh, dying before you die, rebirthing, and many alchemical symbols of the cross and getting out of mind control, getting out of the box of Saturn. Um, numer uh, numerically, I see truth in it. Symbolically, I see truth in it. The problem I have with Christ is the vampire. That Mithra is from Armenia, near Transylvania. They... Mithra said, eat my flesh and drink my blood and live forever. Jesus said, eat my flesh, drink my blood and live forever. Jesus called people dogs. He's, one woman said, Lord, please heal me and save me. And he said, I don't throw bread to dogs. 
He also said, you can't tell those people the truth because they will bite you like a dog. So this is a war between the vampire and the dog. The vampire has two souls. They self-impregnate like Jesus' mother. They are the original Adam and Eve before Eve was cut. And um, they are androgynous. They do not copulate. They self-impregnate. Um, this is why you always see Jesus holding up two fingers. This means someone with two souls, both Adam and Eve. And um, I don't like the idea of eating the flesh of Christ and drinking his blood like a vampire. Um, the dogs are the canines, but the can the Cain and Abel are the cannibals. Cannibals are the ones who eat the flesh and drink the blood like Jesus. Jesus also said, if you don't hate your brother, your mother, your sister, even your own life, you can't go. So there's something about some stuff going on in the Bible that's quite questionable that no preacher sits and talks about. They don't talk about that. They don't tell you that the Bible um, never says for you to have a marriage ceremony. Never. Adam and Eve wasn't married in a marriage ceremony. And the marriage ceremony is a contract that you sign. And those contracts are not in the Bible. The ceremony is not in the Bible. It's really adopted from a pagan ritual of the wedding ring was dipping the ring in the blood of a, of a sacrificed animal and the bread went to a god and the dress represented um, many things. None of those things are in the Bible. When the preacher stands there and opens the Bible and says, Dearly beloved, we are gathered here. This is what God said. Not true. Not one of those words is in the Bible. Not one. So that these churches tell you that you must get married in a church and sign a contract. Not true. I have a lot of problems with religion. And I have some problems with Christ. However, in many of my readings, I see that Christ is not a man but a place that manifested as a man, but yet could be many people all at once because that's what gods are. This is why he says, turn over a stone and there I am also. He is the age of Pisces. We follow him to the age of Aquarius and become as powerful as him. He said so. So I'm not afraid of the vampire, but I, I um, I don't think that um, that the Bible, I think it can serve to really confuse you. I think that the, the bridge is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is something that can talk to all of us. And it will lead you to power, truth, and life. It is the way, the truth, and the life. And so if you hear the Holy Spirit, you will hear the Christ energy. And the crystallization of Christ will manifest within you and you will make your way to a great awakening and to the age of Aquarius and out of mind control of the reptilians. But I just think that this man, Jesus, from the Bible and this Paul that never met Jesus that built all these churches to worship outside of ourselves when Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within, there's a lot of contradiction. And so this is why I do what I do because I don't care if Buddha comes forward, Toth, I don't care. I am open. I want to be an empty vessel. Um, but I do not want to be under mind control. And I do not want to be powerless. And I don't want to be a liar. So I do see that the baptism is beneficial. And I do see that anointing is beneficial. I do see the purification of alchemy, of transforming from lead to gold, from the moon to the sun to be beneficial. I do see that star systems are coming into alignment where we are going through a major shift. And this shift is a wonderful thing. But I could be under mind control. <laughs> um, I know that things happen in, in our world that we're unaware of. There are principalities and powers that want you under mind control. And my job and my goal the entire time has been to give you the voice of the Holy Spirit. 
and to let you know that you can be powerful and to let you know that you can have the answers within you, not from me. I try to help as best I can, but I don't know that there is a perfect answer. I just know that the answers are within you, in your heart. Yes, and symbology can hold many meanings. If you're in your mirror phase, you're going through the eye of the needle. So this compass over here is pointing toward 11. 11 is 1111. This is a pole shift. It's a shift within you where you stop using your mind to understand things. And you put the Bible down and you put what the world says down and you put the words down and then your heart begins to control your mind and your heart is 5,000 times stronger than your mind and you begin to hear the spiritual voices of truth and life. And that's, that's the voice I want to hear. The lion at the bottom is um, a a satanic. The uh, Satan roams to and fro looking for people to devour like a lion near the reptilian. All the energies down here is the world of chaos and the age of Pisces and a prison. So whenever you're looking at these images down here, someone's in a prison. There's a fox. Oh, grandmother, what big eyes you have. One shoe is dark, one shoe is light. World Wide Web, W. Reptilian. Satan. Roaming to and fro, looking who to devour. Now, there are good lions. The lion is also representative of the sun. And Christ. But for this lion to be down here, it's Satan. But what raised you up? Baptism. And then you had to move through the body of Pisces, which is the body of Christ. And then it shifted you. And like this piece says over here, Christ is a portal that takes you out of a lower world. So the body of Christ is a portal takes you out of reptilian mind control and puts you up. And then you get born again like a stork into the energy of the sun. Right? Um, I think we should just be thankful that we're not down there anymore. We have escaped a prison through the energy of the sun. And the sun is, is... the number of the sun is 111. Oh, thank you so much, Paradox. Yeah, ayahuasca tea. I think that this would help you, um, possibly, but um, I. I It would have to be something that happened in divine timing. You shouldn't seek it out. Um, But I think that you, um, you, you have a gift you haven't tapped into. And you need to know that you've left a prison now. And you need to know that you're free now. I think that will help you to let go of this connection to Pisces. And keep your foot out of the age of Pisces. So that you know that you have been twice born. And that you are, you have many parts to yourself that need to come into balance. Before you step into your power, there's things that have to be balanced. And that is knowing that you aren't just you, that God can speak through you and move through you, which means that you can do great and mighty things.
we are going through a massive shift right now and it's going to be reflected in the physical. I've heard that. And I just had a conversation with somebody about that at the post office. Oh, thank you so much, Black Blackout. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I I mean the, the last thing I ever want to do to you guys to do to you guys is to mislead you, but um, you know I'm sorry. I was raised up very religious, and and I do not find very many positive things. Um with those religions. I think that like many things, things can become corrupt. I believe that action is a prayer, that you have the ability to hear the Holy Spirit, your higher self within you. I believe that we double our soul. I believe that we can take a piece of alchemy and Egyptian mythology and Buddhism and every religion and allow it to add to our joy, our power. And I think that if you are not polarized by self-importance or low self-worth and you are in that eye of the needle, then stand in your power and, and protect it. And don't let anyone tell you that you're wrong. Because of one scripture in the Bible says in the book of Romans, I think, um, if the Holy Spirit is dominating you, which is the vo is the Spirit of God within you, there is no condemnation for anything you say or do because the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding you every step of the way, right? And I think that that's what this piece is saying to you, Caitlin. I think that you don't realize that you are twice born. I think that you don't see God within you. I think that you're, you're afraid of your magic and your power. Maybe every single day realize that you do, will have the ability to do things if you hear the voice and follow that voice. To be an oracle. If Jesus said you can be as powerful as him and more, did not Jesus prophesy? Yes, and was an oracle. Told the woman, oh no, you didn't have just one husband, you had five husbands. How did he know that? We are meant to be oracles. We're meant to um, connect to things. And I just want to leave this religion behind and not associate Christ with this religion. This religion is, to me, sick, really sick. The Christian religion is sick. And I don't see very many powerful Christian people. I see people just standing on a pedestal, trying to be right, which is self-importance. What people should be doing who are in the Christian church is standing there saying, you have the ability to hear the Holy Spirit yourself. The kingdom of heaven is within you. You can be as powerful as Christ and more if you believe. And if you are not polarized, you can do great things. Believe in magic. Believe in being an oracle. But you don't hear that. It's almost like I want to take religion and just cut it off me forever <laughs> and never talk about it again because I'm so tired of it. It's like, dear Christian, comma, many a fortnight have I considered writing you this letter about how great you think Christ is and yet you will not step into the body of Christ yourself. So please, F off. Sincerely, Mary Moses. Yeah. Don't even get me started on Catholicism. Jesus said never to call anyone father. And, um, and that organization has harmed more children than any other organization on earth. So don't even want, don't even get me started there. 
<laughs> I'll go back into my shame, blame lion and I don't care anymore. I do, I think that we do consider other spiritualities and I've always said over and over, the answers are within you, not me. Yeah. Well, Christ um, is a God, and gods are bodies of time. God is the age of Pisces that has a particular energy. And then the energy of God changes into another body of God. There are seven spirits of God in the Bible. The mansion of many rooms that Jesus talks about. There are many gods. And they're all fragments of one energy, of course. Fragmented. So the age of Aquarius is another body of a god. Like Solomon wasn't... Solomon was a man. But he was... There was a man that was also a body of time. Solomon means sun, moon. Sol, Oman, sun, moon. And if you are a body of time that lasts 3,600 years or more, then as the body of that God and time, you can manifest as a man, an animal, a burning bush, a boat, anything really. This Christ manifested as a man, but was also a body of time, was also probably many people, not just Christ. They have these abilities to be many people, millions of people possibly. King Solomon came forward in our art one time, literally showing a kingdom like a castle on top of his head, saying, I am a realm of time. We are currently in the body of a God right now. We went through the body of Christ. Some people are still going through the body of Christ. Why would Christ be a man, but then he says, turn over a stone and there I am also. It is a realm of time. If you played a game called the body of Christ and you put your consciousness into that game for a certain amount of years, that's what it's like. Oh, what's the name of this game? Oh, that game's called Jesus Christ. Oh boy, what do I have to learn when I go there? Oh, you will have to heal seven wounds on a planet of seven, seven continents, seven seas, seven days in a week, seven colors to the rainbow, seven musical notes, seven um, metals, seven chakras, seven spirits of God, seven trumpets, seven seals, seven heavens, seven deadly sins, seven wonders of the world. Um, yeah, and uh, when, when you go there, you'll have to die before you die and learn how to be reborn. And then you will have to learn how to become powerful like Christ. Otherwise, uh, you don't really escape that game. You don't win the game. Oh, sounds terrible. <laughs> Who would ever want to go there? Or here's this game. This one's called Solomon. This is the sun dominating the moon. Oh, in this game, you get to go into a castle. And in this game, you um, learn that there are demons known as jinn. And these jinn um, control people unless you hear the magical words or 
perform certain magical tricks um, in order to get rid of them, and then you defeat the demons. Oh, this is in a book called Testament of Solomon. Oh, okay. I don't really want to play that game either. You have another game? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see, see, I have met um, certain individuals that wear cloaks, um, like the reptilians wear cloaks, um, on the spirit realm. And I'm going to tell you something about that religion. This has happened to me twice. If I go into your house on the spirit realm, I see your energy and your power. If your house is small, I know you have not collected a lot of power. If your house is messy, then you have emotional issues. If your house is on fire, you're probably going through the baptism of fire. If your house is full of water, you're probably going through into the baptism of water. And so on the dream realm, houses are quite significant. If the house is demolished, you probably died. Um, but for, in one instance, I did a reading for someone. And usually if I do a reading, and I don't mean usually, but sometimes I do a reading for you and then I meet you on the spirit realm. I saw this woman with her child outside her house. And her daughter was here. And she was Catholic. And I walked up to her and I said, why are you outside of your house? She said, I was locked out. I said, oh, so I broke in her house for her. I go upstairs, there is a, a priest man up there wearing a black coat, cloak and a black hat. And I knew that he was and I confronted him to be up in the top level of a house is controlling your mind. It is stealing your power and your energy through a contract. I walked upstairs, I opened the door and I said, who gave you permission to be in her house? And he said, she did. She signed a contract through her religion. And I said, yes, but you don't obey the Holy Spirit. And he slammed the door in my face. I walked downstairs and I saw the tiniest little bird little teeny weeny tiny bird on the floor and I knew that she didn't have very much power this person took all her power and she gave him permission part two I was taking a friend to a local church it was called St. Agatha in Defuniac Springs, Florida. I'd never been there before, but I was thinking about that church. Well, that night I dreamed of this woman. She was an older woman. She was wearing a robe and I went into her house. She had a little white house. I didn't know what I was doing. I allowed my mind to just do whatever it wanted. And I didn't know that I had power to see. I go into her little house and there's a blob, black blob in there. And it took my soul. 
and slammed me into the ceiling and the floor three times, and I had no power over it. And it scared me to death. The next day I go to this church, that woman is on the pulpit. She's the leader of that church. After church, we sit and have brunch. I sit next to her, and I tell her my dream because I think it's an omen that I'm sitting next to her. And I say, I had a dream that you lived, that I, that I met you and you lived in a little white house and you had a demon and it yanked my soul up and down. I, I said, what do you think about that? She said, well, I do live in a little white house, but he's not a demon. He's a ghost. And I said, a ghost. She said, yeah, he's throw, he throws tile at me. And I said, oh, like throw in the towel. She's like, no tile. Cause she had a Southern accent, like little pieces of tile from her bathroom that comes apart in her floor this demon throws it at her. She doesn't think he's a demon. She calls him a ghost, right? But there's something about this. If we don't learn to see the unseen world, the principalities and powers, we don't fight flesh and blood. We do fight principalities and powers and we fight and we don't know what we're signing a contract to through these religions. We have to be very careful. I didn't know what to tell this woman. She totally, you know, didn't know why she was all powerless. But the key is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, this person did not like the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the key. Yes, so the jinn and the genie are connected to the hat man. Oh, let me explain. And Caitlin, um, I want to give you um, some encouragement that this is the only part that's still connected to here. All of the, these other three parts are really good. Um, and you will meet your twin flame. And you are an oracle, but you 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 have the ability to speak to the dead, like I do. You you will dream or see things. Please believe in magic, and be thankful that you are now out of a prison. You are out. You are not part of that anymore. You will see people who are in it, but you're not. You got to start using your power within you. King Solomon, the jinn. The jinn is mostly in the Quran. And the story goes that the jinn took two rings of power. King Solomon put the jinn in bottles made of lead, especially if they disobeyed. The jinn was spelled like this, came from Japan, and then changed to jinn. Over time, it changed to genie they are known as the genius and they are in our genes which is why the bible starts with genes genesis and why people are gentile they were a smokeless vapor that looks like a black blob that was created before humans were created they hate humans Something happened where our genes were manipulated and in order to find our way back to God, we have to move through the body of Christ or the age of Pisces or whatever you think it is. And we have to go through a great awakening and follow frequency and life energy. But anyway, so half gen, half reptile. This is why Caitlin's piece has a reptile. This is purifying our soul to get closer to God. It is the alchemy of shifting from lead to gold. 
from ignorance into knowledge. So yeah, the jinn are jerks. And um, we have to be aware of principalities and powers because we don't deal with people. Not everyone is is out of mind control. Some people are under the control of the gentile, the gen and the reptile. Yes. I think that, you know, recapitulation is just something that really helps your ethereal net. And this ethereal net helps you to see on the spirit realm. If you don't know whether you're dealing with principalities or powers or jinns or uh, uh, jerks, um, then you're lost. But you, when you realize that your mind works like the golden compass and through the energy of the sun and sun gazing, this is what the infrared IF um, reflects, the sun and the compass, that your double self gets ignited through the sun and your mind works like the golden compass. So seek first the kingdom of God because if we think about this world down there, we will attract their energy onto us and sign contracts just through thought. Why did Harry Potter, when he went to, to um, Hogwarts, have to fight Voldemort out of his head? Voldemort was a reptilian. The Voldemort wants you thinking of them. If you think of them, you have a connection to them. If you are connected to them, they can control you. But if you die before you die and you become reborn, then this is what happens. Caitlin's energy was connected to a reptilian mind control. Through a baptism or something that happened in her life, she went from the contract to this reptilian to being born again. And that reptilian can't find her anymore. She is protected divinely, not by the lion of Satan, but by the lion of God, the sun. So maybe Caitlin doesn't realize that this doesn't need to touch her anymore. Maybe she doesn't see God in her life or within her. But this reading is telling Caitlin she is absolutely with God. And all she has to do is get her feet out of the world of the dead, out of the Gentile and the reptile, and let go of the age of Pisces. Know that you are part flesh, part spirit, and go ahead and step into your power. This means realize that your mind works like the golden compass and purify yourself every day. And that you will find your twin flame. but you do have a talent of talking to the dead. And this is a muscle that must be exercised between you and your double self, God within you. Yes, we are at a disadvantage if we, if, if we cannot see the spirit realm. This is why I always say your actions during the day either hunt for power or you give your power away. Breathing exercises and the recapitulation takes and strengthens your power back so that the dark ones cannot see you or detain you. And if you are full of illumination and light and you've shifted from dark to light, they cannot see you or detain you. So one foot is dark, one foot is light. Make, all, make both of your feet light. So they cannot see you or detain you because one foot is dark. They're going to see you. One foot is light. They can't see you. Keep in the light. Watch your thoughts.
If you're not remembering your dreams, I think I know what's wrong. I'm going to give you a formula for stepping into your power, Caitlin. You're going to begin creating things with your hands. Let's talk about life and death. Life as a human being begins at 70 hertz where you start where, where you are healthy. If you start getting sick and your immunity is compromised, your frequency will go down to 62 or less. If you are on the very brink of your last breath and death, it is 25 hertz frequency. And of course, zero means stone cold dead. A, a healthy human resonates between 70 and 100 hertz frequency. So you're going to think in terms of frequency if you want to remember your dreams and if you want to see who you're dealing with. We don't deal with flesh and blood. You can meet the nicest person in the world, but then you meet them on the spirit realm and they aren't who you thought they were. So you need to do this. The very first thing that you want to do is hydration. Water is life. Your brain is 88% water. Your body is 75% water. If the water that you're putting in your body is fluorinated and chlorinated, you are drinking poison. It is dead water. You want to drink living waters. I don't know where you live. There's a possibility you could collect rainwater or you could take a water body of water near you and boil it. Um, but I personally recommend finding a well and either drinking out of the well or finding someone who has a well that's connected to a uh, aquifer with spring water. Living water comes from the earth and is siphoned through stone and it gives you minerals and it helps to activate your frequency to be very strong. I personally take spring water and activate it with magnetism, with a magnet and um, crystals, things like that. You can take your spring water and take a tuning fork and activate your water, or you can just sniff it up your nose, which goes directly to your brain and activates the water near your brain. You'll begin to collect power that way. The other thing you need to do is get pH strips, urinalysis strips, and you, uh, they're on Amazon, they're like $11 and it's called Q11. Um, basically you pee on the urine strip and within two minutes it'll tell you if your pH is acidic. An acidic pH will make you depressed, angry, and you will be out of balance. Your holy temple is your body. So think in terms of frequency. This pH urinalysis strip from Amazon checks your hydration, your pH, your glucose, your liver, uh, many different functions of your body. You're gonna want to take care of your body. Hydration and pH. Now you can buy pH strips um, and it's a tongue thing. And if it turns green, then your pH is 7.0. So your pH should be 7.0. Now, um, the other thing that you'll want to do is sun gaze with your eyes closed and stand barefooted. Connect to trees, take nature walks. And if you can get near the ocean, go to the ocean and breathe in because our cell phones and <laughs> negative ions. Your cell phone, your computers, 5G towers, and even bacteria and viruses have positive ions. 
you are a negative ion emitter. What, how, does, how do you get negative ions? Negative ions comes from nature. It's in trees, but it predominantly comes from the sun hitting salt, like salt water, like the ocean. So a lot of negative ions come from the ocean. But you are a negative ion emitter. You have salty tears and salty sweat and you are warm. So when our heart chakra begins to open to the electromagnetic energy of the sun, we, um, your heart needs negative ions to function properly. Otherwise, it gets distorted and your torus field, which looks like a apple, gets a bite out of it like the apple iPhone. You don't want a bite out of your torus field or your apple. So negative ions is very important. Um, take a bath in salt water. Put your head all the way under water every day. This will help to clear the positive ions and all the negative things that are affecting your heart chakra. Crystals are wonderful to get into. You're going to want to start making things. Make things with your hands. Study about sacred geometry, numerology, and the platonic solids, like the dodecahedron or the icosahedron and things like that. Just focus on, on heavenly things. And so get into the platonic solids. Sacred geometry which is the voice of God. Get some sheets and clothing that have organic cotton if you can. Organic cotton has a frequency of 100 hertz. Linen has 5,000 hertz frequency. This is why gurus often wear cloaks made of linen or wool. Never mix linen with wool. Get rid of things that are rayon, polyester, nylon, or even silk. Silk only has uh, a frequency of 15 hertz. Canned food has 0 to 15 hertz frequency. It's death. So food can have life or death as well. So fruits and vegetables, nuts and honey, things like that uh, are high vibe. Then there's death food. Soda is death, 15 or less. So think in terms of frequency and maybe start coloring mandalas, the flower of life, and doing something with your hands that reflects life energy. And last but not least, you're going to clean. Clean your house, clean your car, clean your beliefs, clean your emotions, and then suddenly your chakras, and everything will get cleaned. I see that you're quite powerful. I don't think that you need to do all this. You have a lot of power already, and you're being helped by a lot of spirit guides. But but um, you're going to want to get rid of like a lot of death energy. So you're going to recapitulate all the power that you gave away. I encourage you to get the Sorcerer's Crossing teach you. If you want to get into alchemy, that's great too. But this is you guys seated around a table and and calling forward the energy of, of those who have died. It says Ea. Ea. Um... So alcohol and even weed is a depressant. So only indulge in this every once in a great while because otherwise it's a depressant which leads to low frequency. If you want to become powerful and see and remember your dreams, think in terms of frequency. Get a frequency fork. And breathe the frequency up your nose. The Egyptians did it. They would hit the onk, and then the frequency of the onk would go up your nose to your pineal gland, to the water in your brain. 
and it wakens you up. Oh, also, have hot tea with honey every day. Honey will help you become an oracle and to see more. It's more important for you to do the work of spirit than it is anything else. And this is what I'm seeing, what spirit wants you to do. Oh yes, essential oils. We today, when we began our reading, actually made universal powder out of arrowroot powder, dark cocoa, um, cinnamon, clove, vanilla powder, and Himalayan sea salt, which has over 84 minerals. And we put some crystals in it too. Um, so essential oils like frankincense essential oil has 147 hertz frequency. Rose, has, I believe, has 320 hertz frequency. There's lily essential oil. This one's really nice too. Every fragrance has, a, has an essential oil. I mean, every essential oil has a frequency. And the sound ah is your highest sounding frequency. Also... So uh, this is what we're making. This is a, we made it at the beginning of the video. This is a, a universal powder. You can see it's um, like a beige color here. I'll open it up. We put a pretty flower in there too. But you can see the color, it's, it's beige. And it smells amazing. We added no essential oil to this. It's arrowroot powder. This is talc-free powder. Dark chocolate cocoa. It's an and this is um, uh, uh, this helps with um, eczema and acne and is oh what's the word? Why am I forgetting? Um, it helps with cellular turnover. It's anti-aging. Um, this is cinnamon. It makes it smell really good. And it's also really good for your skin. A little sprinkle of Himalayan sea salt. Has 84 minerals. Madagascar vanilla powder. And cloves powder. You just mix it all together. And it makes a makeup. A dry shampoo. A subtle coloring for your hair. And you can put it anywhere, and it's high frequency. Now, you could add frankincense to it, but this cinnamon vanilla clove smells so good the way it is, I just don't even like to change it. It's great for all skin colors because it has a very light beige color to it. And so I'm every day going to teach you guys how to make stuff yourself. Put it in a pretty little thing. Put a pretty little top on it have a pretty little puff puff and you made your own makeup, dry shampoo, powder, high frequency, negative ion emitting, uh, something that you can't buy anywhere else. So I encourage you guys to make stuff too out of natural products. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Beachy Chef. If you want to make it a little darker, let, let's go ahead and make it a little darker. Just for curiosity's sake. Get our little flower out of there. Now, we'll take a little bit more cocoa powder. If you want to color your hair naturally every day, you can put a little of this in your hair, if you, especially if you have dark hair. And that way you don't have to dye your hair. The chemicals of the dye go straight to your brain. So we're going to shake that powder up in here. We put some crystals in that helps it to mix it around really well. Now it's a little darker.
So it's three parts arrowroot powder and then common sense the rest. But it smells wonderful. And you'll go walk around smelling like cinnamon and vanilla. And, and it's really good for you. Looks like it needed to be stirred a little bit more. Get my little stirring here. Get that stirred. Put a little on my leg. It doesn't even make a color at all on me. It blends like perfect. Hmm. And it smells great. So, yep. Yeah. Arrowroot, cinnamon, dark chocolate, cloves. The last one was uh, Madagascar vanilla powder. This is important because the vanilla smells like flowers. It smells so good. And then this is a little grainy. You may not want to add Himalayan sea salt because of the graininess. But it has 84 minerals. But I will give you a little, a little um, something that you can do if you really want salt in there. What you can do is take the salt and put it in a spoon. Add some frankincense. Salt melts. Give the frankincense time to melt the salt. When the salt is completely melted with the frankincense, you can add it to the powder and shake it around and it will be salty without the grain of salt. It's like salt water, salt oil. Give it a little time for it to melt because salt will melt. And so once that salt melts and it's just frankincense salt, put it in there and shake it or blend it for a long time, getting all of the oil saturated in with the powder. And just never use water. Water will mold. Use an oil only. If you want to use lemon oil, orange oil, whatever you want, put the salt in with that and wait for the salt to melt, then add it, and then you will have the Himalayan sea salt without the graininess of it being too, too grainy on your skin. But for the purpose of time, we just sprinkled some in there anyway. But you should melt it first so that you, you just have a nice fine powder without any graininess. Yeah, thank you. All right, guys, well, Caitlin, take a picture, darling, and contemplate what you saw today. There's things in here that we may not have thought about, but you are like Fiona, and you will find your Shrek. And you are, just be thankful and know that you are um, twice born. You're going to be going through a lot of learning to become a master. And it will happen like a thief in the night. Because your spirit guide currently is a white stag. And uh, But you did have something in your past that needs to um, be realized, I guess. Um, my, if, so m the way that I would do this is to put it in a blender. If you're going to add oil, um, I would, I would use, um, a blender and the blender isn't just, um, what it's doing is it's aerating it and taking all the particles and just saturating the powder with the essential oil so that it gets everywhere, right? Um, but the reason I didn't add an essential oil is because we were only using powders, cocoa powder, cinnamon, clove, and vanilla powder. The vanilla is, to me, one of the best things. And then arrowroot powder. You just mix those and then that's it. But if you want an essential oil in there, I, I recommend either putting in a coffee grinder or a blender. You will not want to... Um, 
You will want to have a coffee grinder or a blender specifically for herbs and for, and for essential oils. And you will not want to use it as a coffee grinder ever again because essential oils are almost impossible to get out of it. So just use common sense, guys, because you can put as much chocolate in there as you want if you want it to be darker. You can put vanilla powder in there if you want. If you want to put micas in there, you can. Um, I make a blueberry thyme powder with mica and it's beautiful and I love it it's sparkly and all of that but many of us are just moving away from you know uh, conventional stuff we want to make our own stuff so this one's a really fun one you can go outside and get an oak leaf and let it dry and put it in a coffee grinder into a powder and make a face mask out of it. Maybe we'll do that another day. I'll show you guys how to make face masks. Um, I have a lot of products that just come uh, naturally from my yard. I have 10 acres and there's a lot of things in my yard where I can show you how to make lots of stuff. We could take a trip in a canoe to the springs. This spring, if you want to Google it, is called... Um, Cypress Springs. If you take a canoe to Cypress Springs because you can't drive there, there's a bank that is full of kaolin clay. It's white clay. And what you have to do is you take a little bit, you know, and put, put a little bit of the kaolin clay in a little bucket. You come home and you have to cook it because there's bugs, microscopic bugs. Anytime you're dealing with water, or mud, you have to dry it completely because water will mold and, and, and the earth has bugs in it. So you take the kale and clay, you cook it at like 300 degrees, you cook the bugs out, it turns out like hard rocks. And then you pulverize it with a hammer, turning it back into a powder again. And then you can add um, all kinds of herbs and perhaps essential oils. Um, you can cook uh, orange peel and harden it and then use a coffee grinder and grind it into orange peel powder for an anti-aging mask. So kaolin clay, orange peel powder, essential oils, sea salt, creating uh, an amazing mask for your face to draw out impurities and toxins. If you add activated bamboo charcoal, it will draw out radiation, positive ions, and all kinds of junk out of your body and everywhere. I used to teach these all the time. I used to have classes and taught how to do all this all the time. I had a store. It was named HR Magoos. I had a commercial on TV and everything. I taught children how to make this stuff. I taught adults how to make it. I had voice classes. Uh, lessons. I had a theater. I taught um, uh, art. I taught all kinds of stuff. My commercial was, welcome to our party. There are lots of things to do. Grab a pretty chair and have some hot tea set for two and then maybe make a lip balm that tastes like chocolate cake. Perfume and a powder that you can take home and make. We have so many things. Uh, we have so many uh, pretty things to make and to have fun. Um, something, 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 and it's fun for everyone. Whether you are four years old or 142, we have a, a wide variety for everyone to do. Um, let's see what I'll, uh, I can't remember what I said. Um, Anyway, it was tea parties. It was all this stuff, and it was so fun. I had a life-size Candyland game. Oh, my gosh. It was the best. But um, this was in Atlanta, and then I moved to Florida, and I opened my store down here, and I did not know that religious people could be so mean. And so I just said, okay, <laughs> I, can't, I can't have my store down here. So I closed my store, and now I'm here on TikTok. Yay. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, the, the chemicals are just awful. I mean, and, um, but you know, I'm going to put some of this stuff on my face tonight. So let's say that you want to turn this into a, a foundation makeup. You want to turn this powder into a foundation makeup. Well, you just add aloe to it, aloe gel, and you blend it with a hand blender. But don't ever add water. Water will mold, then you'll have to add a preservative, and then suddenly you're in the chemical range. You're in chemical world. Stick with oil, stick with aloe, and this aloe, is you can get an aloe plant and just use you know like but but this is aloe gel no fragrance no chemicals no color nothing like that but you can also just put oil in it but it might be too oily for your face um but you can turn this into a liquid foundation as well if you felt like it Oh, thank you. Okay, so the clay that I took, I baked at 300 for how long? Um, I believe that I baked it, and it all depends on how much you have. You should always lay it out as flat as you can, like a cookie thing, and bake it thoroughly. Um, I believe that I baked it for about 30 minutes at 300. It, it doesn't take that long for it to harden. Remember, it's clay. It's going to harden in the oven. But then you pulverize it with a hammer and or you can use a coffee grinder and turn it back into a powder again. And then you begin to add things to that to make your face mask. If you live in Georgia or somewhere where there's red clay, you can go collect that red clay Put it in the oven, bake it at 300 degrees for about 30 minutes, depending on how much you put in there. Use common sense. If it's so totally solid and cooked all the way through and hot, you've killed the bugs. Good job. Then you take a hammer and you pulverize it into a powder and you have red clay that you can use for your face. There's lots of clay around in the earth you can use. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, I better go because this video is going to be so long to upload. Thank you for being here. We were supposed to have two readings today, but somebody canceled for whatever reason. Um, and so, yeah, I encourage you guys to make videos about making stuff. Get into making stuff. I've just stopped watching videos about how the world is ending and trains are derailing and all this is happening. I just don't even care. I'm over here making makeup, powder, um, negative ion pine cones, um, cabinets, glow-in-the-dark stuff, and pretending that the world is getting better and that, that things are... Um, happy and we are ascending <laughs> because I am just not going to buy into all the negativity. I'm just not going to do it. I would much rather just live in la-la land. I will make my life-size candy land game and take a choo-choo train and run through it and put gl glow-in-the-dark glitter all over my yard and play like a little child. I am not going to be an adult, a boring adult, worrying about the world. I don't even care anymore. I hope you guys don't care either. I hope you guys escape with me and we get sneaky and we leave the world of chaos and we go and we make some awesome stuff. Maybe we'll have a store one day. Maybe we'll be able to give it away as Christmas gifts or birthday gifts. Maybe we'll save a lot of money in the long run that way. Maybe we'll get happier overnight. Maybe we'll wake up in a new world. I hope so. That'd be awesome. All right, guys, I love you so much. We will see you again tomorrow at 2 o'clock Central. Bye-bye.